Coming up on show 676, the CEO of VW says the race is on with Tesla and gives a warning for 2020. It's make or break. Plus, we're talking about how many connectors the UK now has to charge your car in. A finance boom in EV charging companies. MGZS gets bigger in India and... Tesla finally declares victory over a terrible law. Those stories and more coming up on the podcast today, including Mercedes-Benz saying those numbers that were announced earlier this week about the EQC. Totally wrong. They'll set the record straight. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Here's what happened on Friday, 24th of January. Martin Lee here, uh, going through every EV story to save you time. Thank you very much to everyone who has left a little review on Apple Podcasts, by the way, the new name for um, where you get podcasts from. We used to be iTunes, but if you do find yourself on there, you get two minutes to leave a little review. It really helps grow this show and reach more people and tell more people about EVs as well. I know it's a faff, don't worry if you don't have a chance to, but it means a lot if you get five minutes to write a review. Thank you as always to myev.com. Now, myev, Inside EVs, Evan X and more are having a big event in uh, a couple of weeks' time, Saturday 8th of Feb, going to be at Basecamp Miami. Big EV meetup. Big YouTube stars turning up to do some talks and Q&A. Uh, goodie bags as well for those that get in there their first. Uh, the RSVP just opened. If you'd like to go along to it in Miami, uh, then just head to evsandt.com. So Volkswagen's group CEO, Herbert Dees, is sending a message to Elon Musk. We are coming for Tesla, reports Automotive News Europe. VW is buying software companies. They're ramping up investments in sustainable vehicles and their battery cell investments. And Dees said on Friday at the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland that they are meaning business in 2020. Tesla's market share just surpassed VW. Well... Say market share, it's not, is it? It's market capitalization, not share of the market. I'll be careful what I say here. Uh, market value surpassed VW for the first time this week, even as the US company sells a fraction of the cars that VW produces, yet to record an annual profit as well. Now, Dees last week called on his his top managers, his head honchos, to speed up the overall efforts to make VW and the group more agile or risk being pushed aside. Uh, he said at Davos, and I quote, It's an open race. The company which adopts fastest and is most innovative, but also which has enough scale in the new world, will make the race. 2020 for the auto industry will be a very difficult year, but we're doing the right things to be competitive. And I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. Of course, Davos is in session and a lot of the big business leaders are there. Politicians as well. I'm sure there'll be plenty of lunches, dinners and meetings behind closed doors. Everything from tariffs to incentives and all those kind of things. Well, the United Kingdom's EV charging network continues to grow. There are now more than 30,000 charging connectors located around the nation. According to ZapMap, the next web says that as of today, there are now... Exactly 30,140 connectors. That's not locations, though. There are just under 11,000 locations listed on ZapMap. Trends show the recent growth in the UK over the last three years really is because of uh, rapid chargers and even in the last year, ultra rapid charge points. HPCs, if you like, high power chargers are being installed. And that's great news. And I, I mention that because ZapMap tends to be my weapon of choice, even if I'm using something like a Polar Charger, which I have my monthly subscription. Uh, so a lot of the time it's free, otherwise it's subsidized. And even then, I just don't... I think the Polar app needs just a little bit of love. It's okay. It's not. It's not... It's not bad, I should say that. Um, but it's certainly not best in class. And it, I find it faffy to use uh, at times, uh, particularly the map section. I'm on iOS, and maybe I'm being an idiot with it, but I just prefer Zap Map. I don't, know, I, I don't know about you. What apps do you use? I'd love to know, actually. Am I missing any? Uh, always get in contact, and feel free to share some knowledge with me, and I can I can pass it on as well. 
Well, Fastned are another charging company, and they're building a European network of fast charging stations for EVs. They've exceeded their fundraising target as they expand the number of sites they operate as Asset Finance uh, Finance International website. Uh, 12 million euros was just been raised by Fastned. From 1,000 subscribers in a bond issue, four times the minimum of the 3 million they wanted to raise, they actually raised 12 million euros. Well, Fastned currently has around 114 stations. They're in places like the Netherlands, Germany, Germany and the UK, and they want to expand to the rest of Europe. They want to focus on Belgium, Switzerland, and France. Now, they recently received approval for, was it 13 motorway locations in Belgium, uh, part of a collaboration with the Highway and Traffic Agency to provide motorway parking in Flanders and have some fast charging stations as well. I like the Fastnet uh, chargers. Most of the ones I've seen that are Fastnet also come with a nice little roof over them as well. That's that's a nice touch. I do like a charger that's covered, especially in a country like this where, oh, it rains, you know, just about every day of the year. Uh, right, let's move on and talk about the MG ZS EV. They've done well in India. MG in India have garnered 2,800 bookings for the MG ZS EV in just 27 days during the first round. They haven't put it on general sale. They're doing kind of round. They're opening up the order books, taking the orders and closing them. Uh, well, the first round of orders did just under 3,000, like I say. MG says the number of bookings received for the ZS EV in such a short time outpaced the total number of uh, EVs sold in India in 2019. According to IndiaToday.in, the deliveries of the MG ZS EV will start on January 27th across uh, Delhi and Mumbai, Bangalore and Hyderabad as well. I'll pop a link in the show notes if you want to read more. MG ZS EV is a car that I've slightly had my head turned by and simply based on price. I love my Renault Zoe, by the way. Second one I've had. Probably have a third one as well. Uh, you may be a GT line spec with uh, CCS fast charging. Oh, lovely. However, for quite a lot less money, uh, you can get an MG ZS EV uh, that is bigger and uh, would certainly fit more baby stuff and good size battery, 44 and a half kilowatt hour, I think, on the MG ZS EV. It is definitely something that, you know, you pay your money and you get what you get. It's not a luxury car, but, you know, as long as you go into it knowing that, you know, the materials aren't going to be the best, it's got good range, it charges pretty quickly, and the EV version of it, not the ICE version, but the EV version of it is a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. If I'm going to be putting the little fella in the back uh, now that we're a three, not a two, it's one of those things that I've never really thought about before. I've always just assumed that all cars are very safe, but I'm looking at these things now. Uh, You know what? I I definitely, I'm sticking with the Zoe, but it's one of those cars that you think, hmm, that's, you know, in a different life. I'd have one of those. They're nice. Uh, I don't know if the MG ZS CV is going to the US. I don't think so. I've heard no plans about it. A bit like the VW ID3. Not turning up. Having to wait uh, for the next ID4 and 5 in the US. Well, according to the Associated Press, a deal has just been struck between Tesla and the state of Michigan, says Carbuzz. The agreement will now allow Tesla to deliver vehicles in Michigan. There does appear to be a catch. Tesla buyers have to have their vehicle titled in a different state. Then they transfer them back to Michigan, which seems weird. Uh, Furthermore, the vehicles will be serviced and sold by a Tesla subsidiary. Uh, Tesla hasn't been completely absent from Michigan, home to America's big three automakers. In the Detroit suburb of Troy, there is a Tesla gallery store in one of the malls. Uh, Anyone can uh, walk in to a gallery, look around, and you can talk to the advisors there. However, the Tesla staff at galleries are not allowed to talk about the price of the car. They're not allowed to talk about how you lease a car. And they're not allowed to talk about anything that relates to actually having the car. Even if you go into a gallery, you can normally ask how much is that picture on the wall if you particularly wanted to buy it from the gallery that's showing it off. But a Tesla gallery uh, really is just that. You can't do anything uh, involved in buying the car. I think most people are smart enough to have a look around the car, like it, 
and then order it online. But some people don't want to do that. And also, this is a ridiculous situation. I find the whole thing very weird, by the way. Uh, let's talk about Audi. Audi has proved the or provided the mobility and charging stations uh, and all the solutions around charging the cars at the World Economic Forum that I mentioned a little while ago in Davos. 90% of the shuttle fleet are electrified, not full electric, uh, says Audi. Uh, reported by Economic Times, Audi have been using some mobile charging containers. They made these with old Audi e-tron batteries uh, developed for the purpose. It claims uh, using about 100 Audi e-trons and uh, to ferry the delegates around at Davos. Uh, and also, uh, in the shipping containers, uh, they have made some little portable batteries which allow the company to operate a co2 neutral shuttle fleet for davos audi claims it has plans to use the mobile charging stations in 20 further cases this year alone one of them being formula e in rome well uber will offer drivers in the uk electric cars from nissan at a discount the company said today, as it faces a potential ban in London. According to CNBC, the ride-hailing operator Uber has signed an agreement with Nissan to introduce a fleet of 2,000 of the new Leafs for drivers who want to drive for Uber in the UK. While the deal is technically open to any UK Uber driver, it's primarily targeted to Uber drivers in London. The deal with Nissan arrives at a very difficult time for Uber, uh, which faces being blocked in London. TfL, Transport for London, have stripped Uber of its licence. They have appealed, and whilst it's under appeal, they can continue to operate for now, and they're going through the courts to try and fight the ban. The other side of it as well for Nissan, I guess, you know, the Leaf is made in three locations around the world, one of them here in the UK, so they would be cars made in this country, sold in this country, used in this country, and that has got to be a good, good thing for anyone who works at Nissan making the leaf. I'd love to know if anyone listens to this podcast who makes the Nissan leaf. They can always email me and say, don't say my name, you know. Wouldn't want the boss to uh, uh, to hear. But I'd love to know if anyone uh, listens to this podcast who actually makes the cars that we talk about. Okay, let's talk about Daimler. On Thursday, yesterday, he said it plans to build 50,000 of the EQC SUVs this year, denying, completely denying a report in Manager Magazine which had claimed it had been forced to pare back its production targets for 2020 because of battery supply problems. Says Reuters, manager magazine said Mercedes had slashed its production target to 30,000 units this year from 60,000 because of a shortage of battery cells from their supplier, LG Chem. Well, a Daimler spokesman said its production plans for 2020 had not been amended. And uh, Daimler's Works Council Chief uh, Michael Brecht told Manager Magazine that one of the reasons the company is struggling to meet battery demand is because of Tesla. They're actually blaming Tesla. Because a couple of years ago, uh, Elon bought Groman Engineering. Now, Groman, a German company, uh, still in Germany, by the way, and uh, a bat they, what, one of the things they did was work on battery automation. And at the time, they were hired by many of the German automakers. Of course, those contracts were terminated when Tesla bought them, and uh, they now work solely on Tesla stuff. Uh, but they were being hired by Mercedes-Benz to build up Mercedes battery manufacturing capacity. And I didn't know this story, and I love learning something new. Uh, this caused problems for Daimler, which was in the midst of ramping up production at its EV battery production unit at uh, Deutsche Accumotive. So I didn't know that. I did. I knew that a lot of the German automakers employed Groman, because Groman was a company that helped people automate production processes better. And that's why, you know, when Tesla were going through uh, production hell with the Model 3, they just needed to bring that on board of, you know, how do we make cars? But I didn't know that they were working with Daimler on their battery uh, plans, battery manufacturing, and the ramp up as well. So that, of course, would have come out of the blue and caused a few headaches. Okay, that's the news for today. If you've got any input, any feedback, I'd love to hear from you. You can always get in contact with this podcast, and that includes the question of the week set by myev.com. We'll read out yours on Sunday. Here's your question. With increasing attacks on EVs and vandalism caught on camera, why do you think some people have a problem with EVs? 
With increasing attacks on EVs and vandalism caught on camera, why do some people have a problem with EVs? I popped to the shops today where there are four EV bays and a couple of uh, uh, seven kilowatt polar network boxes with an A and a B side. So there's space for four EVs. There was a leaf plugged into one. There was an Audi parked in the fourth spot. And there was a BMW on a 69 plate. So that's new, right? Um, there was a, I think it was a three or a five series. And it was parked directly down the middle of the other two bays. So it's either someone who's just a moron or they have intentionally, because the car park was kind of busy, so you would try and keep to a space rather than used to. So firstly, it's someone who's bought themselves a brand new BMW and thinks, I'll park where the hell I want to park. Could be that. Or it could be someone intentionally blocking the EV. Because it wasn't as if they'd just kind of gone over the line a bit. It was right down the middle of their car. And I mean, okay, they don't want their new car dinked and door dings and stuff like that. Just park at the bottom of the car park. Don't block the... So I couldn't charge. It wasn't urgent. I had like 20, 18 miles left. It wasn't urgent. But I looked at that and I thought, mm, I'd love to ask the person. I'd love to know why. And I wouldn't. I'm not confrontational. But I'd love to know, was it a mistake? Was it on purpose? Do you hate electric cars? Are you making a point by doing this? And, and if you are, ah... <sighs> So, why do you think some people have a problem with EVs? I'd love to know your thoughts. You can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on YouTube or socials. There are 230 patrons of the podcast. You keep me going. Thank you very much for your sheer generosity. Uh, Patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. 674 previous episodes have all been funded by my premier partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, uh, Brad Crosby, my premier partner, and Avid Technology. I'll read out the uh, rest of my names on Sunday, as I always do. I like to give everyone a full name check on a Sunday. And I get people saying, oh, it, it, the, you know, it, it, the list is too long. I skip that bit. Well, whatever. <laughs> Your problem. <laughs> I, I just love reading out the people who make this show happen because I am so grateful for that. In the meantime, come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>